As the fire ravaged down and down and down through the buildings, consuming everything else, it may possibly have generated enough heat. So that was their starting position, Alex. But then when they got themselves and I gave them all the film and other visual evidence of what had happened, it was after their full studying of that that these world-leading experts who I know and I trust said, Alan, no, our first thought was wrong. There is absolutely no question it was the towers were brought down by controlled explosions from within. So, um, once that's established, and many of your own American experts have established that, there is just no getting away from it, Alex. It is a conspiracy. Well, the bigger issue here is all these other engineers. You know, uh, so, so, so you're there talking to them. You can see them being you know, blown up, uh, the, the concrete being turned to dust, the beams being ejected 600 feet. Uh, you know, it's clearly happening. Building 7, not hit by a plane, a classical controlled demolition. Why are these engineers, and I guess thousands have gone public now, and architects and physicists, but why aren't more of them, you know, any engineer who really looks at this knows the truth. NIST has backed out of their last six reasons that uh, Building 7 fell and the towers fell. They lied and said the building was hollow and all these other things. So... You know, why do people then just cowardly not come out and tell the truth? Alex, it's very simple. Why, if, if you look at the mainstream media, and you and I, I think, would agree that it totally suppresses the truth, not only about 9-11, not only about many things, it totally suppresses the truth about the making and sustaining of conflict in the Middle East. Now, why does it do this? All right, stay well, there. We're going to come back and talk about that with our guest, Alan Hart. Stay with us. And all the major Western governments up to their eyeballs in knowledge of it. And people inside government, it has the dual effect where people that are in the know get even more scared and self-censor. And the general public buys into the lie and then they're ready to believe the next lie about WMDs or whatever's going on. But when you have all of these, you know, these four or five big lobbies, when they line up on an issue and when it helps all of them, you better believe you're going to see a movement. And uh, it's just horrible. But, but Alan Hart, uh, you know, two points. Going back to these top engineers you're talking to, were they horrified after they saw the information, A? And then, B, are you not seeing the massive awakening where people are just sick of self-censoring and we are seeing everybody come out of the woodwork just, just, just telling the truth now? And I think this, the system is very afraid. Well, Alex, I, I, I think something very important is happening. I mean, what I'm, I'm learning on this uh, first of what I hope will be several trips to America is that most Americans, most English people, most Europeans, as citizens and voters, we have one thing in common. We now loathe all of our politicians. Isn't that what we have in common? All the polls show it. For the first time in history, both parties are, are universally hated. Well, I, the last time I saw a poll, I think Congress's rating was down to 21% and falling to 20 Now, that is very serious. So maybe what we are witnessing is uh, the be beginning of a process in which people are beginning to wake up. But what they've got to do, Ray, is to make their feelings known and say, up with this, we are not putting. But let me speculate to a nightmare scenario. In Britain, we're heading for 3 million unemployed. Now, it's calculated that if we pass that, and we will, they'll be rioting on the streets. Look at America. If the economy continues to go bad, and in my view it will, your, your economic situation is going to go worse. Go into next year, the economic situation gets worse, you have a long, hot summer. I believe you too will have rioting on the streets. The problem is the system wants that. That gives the system the opportunity to bring in martial law and buy by what passes for democracy. That's my fear. Well, Alan, and, and we have the IMF World Bank documents that were leaked when Sicklitz, uh, the Nobel Prize winner, left in 2002. The IMF calls it the IMF riot. You're absolutely right. And they're admittedly gearing up for it all over Europe, England, and the U.S. This has been a planned implosion, just like the Goldman Sachs documents show. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the truth is that almost all of our politicians loathe democracy or what passes for democracy and simply like to shut it down. Well, we've seen Obama's people, Bush, uh, they're constantly saying uh, what we saw uh, the famous uh, director uh, came out, uh, Woody Allen, just last week and said it'd be great if Obama was a dictator. We should just lock up all the people that disagree with him. And they're serious. But the name of the game, I think we're not disagreeing, Alex. The name of the game is informing people to give them the possibility, uh, empowering them to make their democracy work before it's taken away from us. And I agree, but we've but but to make it work, uh, we've got to be hardcore like you are and just tell it like it is. You know, you go in and you got brain cancer and it's operable. You don't tell them they got a sprained ankle. Right. Right. It comes down, uh, Ray, to um, what one feels about the potential of Americans. And let, let me tell you this. I've said it publicly before. I have a love-hate relationship with America. On one level, I think most Americans, generally speaking, are the most misinformed, underinformed, gullible people on Earth. That's the bad news. The good news is that deep down, I think they are the most idealistic. And if they were properly informed and well-led, I think they could not only turn their own country around, I think they could give the world the lead it needs. Am I being naive for thinking that? No, you are spot on. That's why we're brainwashed. That's why we're dumbed down, is because they understand we've had the greatest liberty in history here, and it's a contagion to the elite. Back in one minute with our amazing guest. Well, he's one of the most respected BBC reporters uh, in Middle Eastern coverage history. And I'm going to get him back on the next month to talk about his friendship with the founder of Israel uh, and, 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 and more. I mean, he really is a Middle Eastern uh, uh, journalistic icon for his coverage uh, of that very respected. And the fact that in the weeks after 9-11, he talked to top engineers. They did an internal study. Just like underwriting laboratories did and found out it was a controlled demolition. And then they fired their engineer who went public with it. Uh, Alan Hart has been on the show with us in the last hour. And we are going to have him back up. But w we can't afford to let 9-11 become 45 years old like Kennedy. We can't allow another 9-11. And, and there's no doubt they've used it to set up this police state domestically to attack the world. Uh, this is the excuse for the authoritarian system. And if you look at the czars 100 years ago, they'd bomb a building, round up a few thousand dissidents. In closing, uh, I think the 9-11 fraud has unraveled. The polls show that. The system is angry that they can't use false flags anymore. It even came out in the mainstream London Guardian last month that a U.S. CIA agent did run the Mumbai attacks. I mean, it came out in the Washington Post. The CIA is putting out fake bin Laden videos. It's... It's now coming out that uh, the CIA is growing the opium in Afghanistan. But I've seen a shift in their tactic, Mr. Hart, to now just kind of throwing it in our face, hoping we just become acclimated. Can you speak to that? Yeah, well, one of the things that really makes me angry is that all of our leaders, they treat us with absolute contempt. They think that we're idiots. Um, and they, you know, they just don't think we can add, add up the dots and, and see how the pieces fit. But there's an old mafia saying, Eric, uh, um, Alex, that I like. Don't get angry, get even. I think that's a good message to the people of America and the people of Western Europe. For God's sake, become informed and start to participate in the political process to make your democracy work. Otherwise, we are all going to end up in Orwellian-type police states. Well, that's right. I mean, they want us to know they're corrupt and bad and, th and that there's no hope. Uh, but there is hope because now uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski said last week, I don't know if you saw this, he said for the first time the entire world is, is awakening to our agenda for world government and we're in trouble. And the CFR people did not look uh, confident. No, well, it's, uh, Brzezinski really did say that, did he? Yeah, I mean, he said it in about a six-minute clip, in, in, but yeah, basically, yes, he said that. Right. So, uh, I mean... Uh, I think we're, we've got a year or two as citizens of the Western world to become engaged or not, because I think we're running out of time before we have this complete systems takeover. 
You know what, sir? Uh, talk about your view, and I may even keep you a few minutes more. I know Bob Chapman won't mind. Uh, we, we've got to go to break, but I'm, I'll probably keep you five more minutes if you can. But start getting into how you – I mean, you talked about the former British prime minister telling you that he was concerned uh, about a total police state. Yeah. When we come back, yeah? Absolutely. But we've got about a minute. Get started. Okay. Well, no, uh, re let's remind your viewers, Ted Heath was a British prime minister. In other words, he knew exactly what was going on behind closed doors. And he feared, after he left office, that Britain would become the first police state. And I can see it in my country as well as your own. All the monitoring that's going on, all the cameras, all the tapping of telephones. I tell you, Alex, when I get up in the morning and I... Uh, the first time I make a telephone call, I normally say into the telephone, good morning, five, good morning, six, our two agencies, good morning, CIA, good morning, Mossad, and bugger the lot of you. So do I. No, I do that.